And we're back with another edition of the Fishing Pole. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Today, I am in my kitchen, and today we're going to make our own version of this. This is power bait. This is what most trout anglers go to bait is when they fish for stock trout, whether it's springtime or whether it's fall. But I'm gonna see if we can make a version of this that's just as good, if not better, than the store-bought version. So let's go to this recipe. So for our homemade trout dough bait, first ingredient we're gonna to go to is of course flour. We're gonna use three quarters of a cup of flour. We're going to use a quarter of a cup of cornmeal. We're gonna use a quarter cup of water. We're also gonna use a teaspoon of garlic. Now garlic is pretty much a general fish attractant and it does work well with a lot of fish. So we're gonna put this into our recipe. So the two other ingredients off to the side we're gonna use, the white stuff in the little thing there is Jet Puff Marshmallow Cream. So why are we using this? The marshmallow cream is buoyant and it will raise our bait above the bottom and allow it to float. So typically when you use a power bait type setup when you trout fish, the power bait is buoyant. It'll float up above the bottom. So you use a split shot, a hook, and a little length between the split shot and the hook. So basically the trout just bang right into it and they can see it because it's sitting right out in the open. We're gonna do that with the uh, marshmallow cream. And the last ingredient we're gonna use is Velveeta cheese. Now before power bait, Velveeta was used pretty much consistently as an attractant for trout. And it does work. So we're gonna add it to the mix. And one of the final ingredients we're gonna use is a little bit of food coloring we're going to put into it we're either going to use i think we're going to use a yellow green might work but i had better luck with yellows and oranges when i trout fish so we're going to add a little bit of color so let's get to this recipe <laughs> the marshmallow fluff really fluffs up. How's about that? Ooh, this is fluffy. So one of the first things I'm going to do is we're going to mix the two wet ingredients together. So next what I'm going to do is we're going to mix all the dry ingredients separately. This is the flour. The cornmeal. And this is garlic. We're going to start adding the marshmallow and cheese. Very odd, odd consistency. And we're going to add a little bit of water. And now we're just going to mix everything up here. Color to it. So I'm just going to add a little yellow dye. We're going to add just like two or three drops. One. What is that? I think that's red. No, that's yellow. <laughs> One, two, it looks red, doesn't it? So the one problem I ran into is it's awful sticky. So I added more cornmeal. And again, you can play with this. Um, the last thing we'll do when this is done is we will put it onto a sheet. Put it on a piece of parchment paper with a little bit of flour. So things to add to this recipe. You can add 
instead of using the marshmallow fluff, you can use um, styrofoam flakes, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, it's not really great for the environment. Um, the nice part about this is this is all biodegradable. <laughs> I mean, this stuff won't be around for a couple hundred years like most stuff we throw. Well, all the plastics we use, all the metals we use. Other things you can use, you can use anise oil. Anise is a flavoring or a seasoning you see in Italian cooking. You'll notice in like Italian cookies, pizzelles, but it does work as a fish attractant. It's been used for quite, quite a few years. Uh, you can add peanut butter to this. Um, you can take the flakes, the flakes that you use to roll sushi, the, sea, the seaweed, and those nori flakes have a very fishy scent, fishy taste to them. You can grind those up and put this in a dough. And there's our finished product. We have probably at least two or three containers, at least of like a little power bay container. Um, we're gonna do a drop test in a second in water. We're gonna see what it looks like. It will definitely stay on a hook. It has a very, very garlicky smell to it, which is an awesome fish attractant. And let's do the float test now. Okay, we're gonna try a little drop test here with this bait. Um, and unfortunately, I'm gonna try a couple different uh, sections of this and it looks like it is not floating. But fear not, I do have a solution. Um, so I put a quarter of a cup of the marshmallow fluff. I would probably go as much as doing three quarters of a cup to even an entire cup of it. And you can play with the recipe a little more. So I'm gonna test this with something different this time. I have a little piece of marshmallow on the dough bait. And as you can see, it is definitely floating. It's given, given off like a, look at it in the water. It's definitely given off a big, big scent trail. And it's not the marshmallow, it's whatever is it. It's the uh, dough bait that's on the bottom here. The water's starting to cloud up, but that is a scent trail that something will certainly recognize. But as you can see with that little piece of marshmallow on there, that'll ha uh, help it float. I would probably tell you if you're going to do this recipe yourself is probably add a cup of the marshmallow fluff to your bait in order to get it to really float. I had a heck of a time trying to mix it together, um, but this will work and you can also suspend it from a bobber to suspend it down. I wouldn't use braid. I wouldn't use something as visible as this. This is just for this little experiment here. I'd probably use fluoro or mono or something that it's harder to see for the trout. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. This is the fishing pole. And at the end of the day, if you don't catch any fish, at least you got something to eat when you come home. Yeah. Eat some. Mastrovia. <laughs>